Hello and welcome to episode 102 of Margaritas with Margarita Chang CFP Pro. I'm Hope Katz Gibbs, producer of the show on the Incandescent Radio Network and Incandescent TV. Today's guest is Christine Simone. She is the co-founder of Caribou, so we'll learn all about that. And our topic is wealth management with a healthcare twist. Before I turn it over to Rita, I will tell you that Christine has years away from, although she's years away from her own retirement, she is obsessed with helping current and future retirees plan and optimize their health care costs. She's held notable leadership positions within the healthcare industry, working with key stakeholders from payers to providers to the veterans to veterans affairs. Now she is the CEO and co-founder of Caribou, a software solution for the finance industry. She's driven by her passion for slashing hidden incentives in healthcare to support smarter financial decision making. And she's in with she's within the small fraction of women founders who have raised venture capital. So we are going to learn all about that and more. Over to you, Ms. Rita. Thank you so much, Hope, for kicking us off. And Christine, welcome. I'm so excited to talk about healthcare and retirement because your health is your wealth. That's for sure. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me here, Rita. I'm really excited to to dig in. Of course. So the big question is, what brought you into the world of wealth management, given your background in healthcare? Yeah, it's definitely, uh, it wasn't a linear path, right? I think that a lot of people wonder what someone with such a robust healthcare background is doing, working within financial services. Uh, but it, I promise it, it makes sense. And I'll walk you through just the brief version of what that was. You know, I studied uh, to want to be a doctor in school. I got into a master's program. And what I basically learned through school and then a variety of other work experiences is that no one within the healthcare system is unfortunately incentivized to help people understand and plan for their healthcare costs. Um, Unfortunately, your providers aren't set up with the right resources to help you as a patient figure that out. Your payers, which are your insurance carriers, unfortunately have misaligned incentives in helping you figure that out. And so what we believe at Caribou is that your financial advisor has a fiduciary responsibility to help you reach your financial goals. And therefore, they are the person who is perfectly positioned to talk to you about your health care expenses, which are one of the top expenses in retirement and are currently the top financial fear for Americans. So there is a lot of alignment there in terms of helping to equip financial advisors with the right resources and to deliver the right advice to help their clients uh, better pair for these moments in their lives and those costs that will incur as they transition into retirement. And it's a win-win for the advisor and for the client. So well said. I just delivered the CFP ethics presentation last week. So when I heard fiduciary, I'm like, yes, yeah. our um, interests are aligned. So how are you seeing retirees plan for future health care costs? Yeah, I think the, the key word there is be proactive, right? So retirement isn't necessarily black and white anymore. I don't think that majority of people, you know, work and then retire and then completely exit the workforce these days. Some people flex in and out of work, for example. Uh, and we want to be cautious of that and understand the goals that people have and how it affects their possible health benefits. Majority of people get their insurance from their employer today. And so we need to keep that in mind as clients are working through different goals in their lives, whether it's just a break from work or a full retirement. So being as proactive as possible and talking to your clients about their transitions in these areas is really, really important. Something that you wanna think about if clients are thinking about selling their selling a business or retiring or simply exiting the workforce for a period of time prior to the age of 65, options are often quite limited when it comes to where to get your health insurance from. And the individual marketplace can be very expensive. So if that is a goal that your clients have, for example, to retire at 55 instead of 65, then you want to be taking that into account because the cost could be five to 10x what you might expect on Medicare, right? So if your client tells you, I'm going to work until 70, then you don't need to build those costs into the financial plan. So it's about being proactive and then also personalized. 
no two financial plans look the same. The same is true of the healthcare line in that financial plan. It depends on your unique circumstances, your household, your health needs. There's so much that goes into that. And we see really, really variable costs from client to client in the range of $3,000 a year to $30,000 a year uh, easily uh, amongst different clients who sometimes live in the same geography too. So there's a lot of different factors that come into it. And what we encourage advisors to do is, again, just be proactive and personalize and then revisit it frequently. Clients want to make sure that just like their financial plan or their investment strategy, that their healthcare cost estimate is not going stale, right? You don't just set it and then let it be, put it in a drawer and never look at it for 10 years. You want to be revisiting it, delivering ongoing advice and ensure that it's optimized just like an investment strategy would be. I love how you're taking a proactive approach. Um, I think that is so important. It's not set it and forget it. So what are some strategies uh, that people need to know when it comes to saving or paying for healthcare? Yeah, again, that comes down to the individual circumstance, right? So let's take the example of a younger individual considering an HSA. Right now, a lot of advisors have a default response to HSAs, which are HSAs are great. They have a triple tax advantage. You know, put as much money in there as you possibly can and let it grow. And we'll talk about how to spend that money in the future for qualified medical expenses. But if you have a client who is um, having a baby or having a hip replacement or some type of a surgery or procedure, for example, and they anticipate very high health care costs that year, that strategy doesn't necessarily fit very well, right? So that comes back to the point of ongoing optimizations to the health care strategy. And we want to make sure that we are revisiting those types of circumstances frequently. So my point is, although HSAs are great, I will always say that um, it comes with the caveat of understanding what your personal situation is and what makes sense for you this year. Because you can modify your benefits annually and you wanna make sure that you're revisiting that all the time. So the HSA is a great, again, tax, uh, triple tax advantage account where you can fund it and uh, reap the benefits in the future uh, for qualified medical expenses. That's one really great tip that I do love to point clients to, so long as they're keeping in mind their healthcare utilization, because it will come with a higher deductible. Another good one is, you know, a lot of um, individuals don't know that they can simply cash pay for certain medications. Sometimes those medications can cost more to get them through your insurance company. Then if you were to just cash pay or look on websites like GoodRx, for example, for uh, a coupon for some generic medication specifically. And on that same point, sometimes it can be less expensive to get medications filled via mail order pharmacy. And that's especially true for Medicare uh, beneficiaries as well. Now, again, you don't want to not enroll in a drug plan. That's only true in some circumstances. There isn't a blanket statement that you can across the board uh, that makes that statement true all the time. So you want to be doing your research, looking into whether or not that is the case for you. But those are kind of two good strategies that I always like to point people to. The HSA is great. And then also looking at ways to possibly access less expensive drugs through either cash pay or coupons. No, I love that. And I know exactly what you mean about a high deductible and HSA. Wouldn't you know it? The year in which I had a high deductible plan is the year that my son broke his foot. Oh, no. <laughs> um, so I tell people, listen, he's fine. Um, yeah. But it's just really important. I didn't predict that he was going to break his mm -hmm. foot and neither did he. Um, of course, of course. But you probably had that and hopefully you knew that in a worst case scenario that year, you would pay up to the deductible and then up to the out-of-pocket maximum, right? So as long as you set that expectation up front and you're looking into that, you know, it. although... Of course, the situation you wish had gone differently that year, right? Um, at least you were semi-prepared for that potential outcome. And I share that it, it experience with clients. It wasn't like anything terminal, but you just have to be mindful, particularly if you have, you know, kids, like things happen. Exactly. Um, so there are what life events are really important for people to look at when they're evaluating 
their health care costs and, and selecting a plan? Well, we just talked about two. So having a baby, for example, would be one uh, or the other of um, new health needs, right? If, if you have some type of a new diagnosis, new medications, for example, that would certainly be another. The two most common that we see advisors really prioritizing are retirement and Medicare eligibility. So no matter what age you retire, really important to have a conversation about healthcare costs because they are going to pretty drastically change. We have some clients who come out of, you know, really robust benefits where they pay no premium and maybe their out of pocket maximum is $500. So at most they pay $500 in out of pocket expenses annually. And then they transition into the marketplace or into Medicare, and they're all of a sudden surprised. We don't want that to be the case for the client a month before their retirement. We want to make sure we're doing that sort of planning a year or even two years in advance of that big milestone. And the same is true for Medicare eligibility. Medicare covers things very differently. The way that the coverage is set up is very different. It's all these sorts of pieces and parts that you have to piece together. And so it's really important to provide clients with education about that transition as early as possible, because if they gave anybody their date of birth, their email, their phone number, they are going to be inundated with mail, emails, phone calls, people showing up at the door, knocking and trying to sell them something that they might not be able to see through the incentives and through the noise of what that plan really covers. So really important that the advisor is the one um, disseminating that education to their clients well in advance in that transition before the client enrolls in something uh, that the advisor doesn't know about. And then other really big ones too are if you're moving, it's a great opportunity to reevaluate health coverage in a different uh, state and those costs could look very different. That applies too to, um, I don't know how old your son was when he broke his foot, but maybe he's a student, maybe he's in college, Maybe he's in a different state for part of the year. Maybe the plan that he's on with you doesn't cover doctors in that state, right? So that's another great opportunity for advisors to connect with the next generation, their clients' kids, and start to deliver value and show them how they can help them proactively plan for certain costs in those areas. Uh, divorce, uh, if you're widowed, unfortunately, you know, those are all events that impact your tax filing status, which impacts what you might pay for Medicare, for example. Um, and there's, there's just so many. Whenever you have those big milestones in life or life events, you know, it's, it's just a great opportunity for the advisor to check in with the client and recommend that they revisit the associated healthcare costs and that line item that they have in the financial plan. So yes, this is super helpful. And you reminded me, you know, my daughter's graduating from high school, parents. Mm. Uh, it's caregivers, guardians. It's really important to make sure that you check that your student has coverage or will be covered. Of course, we sense your passion for what you do, but what do you love most about the work you do? Well, I guess the opportunity to work both with advisors as well as their clients. I think that ultimately at the end of the day, the entire team at Caribou is really passionate about helping just the day-to-day consumer navigate the healthcare system and being able to do that through the lens of the advisor is truly phenomenal because you have somebody who really does care about helping their clients navigate just the financial complexities of life, whether it's healthcare or anything else, it's just the financial complexities of life. And just like in finances, you know, there's healthcare literacy too, and that also impacts how much you're going to spend. Same is true of financial literacy. The more you know about your investment strategies, where you spend your money, the more you're on top of your spending, your credit card bill, and so on, the more likely it is to actually align with the financial plan. Same is true of healthcare. The more you know, the more education you're able to provide, the better it is and the more aligned it is with what you're expected to spend and the less reactive type of response you get. Uh, as it relates to your healthcare costs. So to be able to just align that mission so well with advisors and then get a solution ultimately into the hands of consumers is something that I'm very grateful to be able to wake up uh, every day and do. I I truly do love being able to provide an objective decision-making support service and company to advisors and ultimately to their clients. 
awesome. So here's the opportunity for you to share websites and contact information, social media handles, how people can learn more. Yeah, so our website is caribouwealth.com. You can book a call directly on that website. Also reach out uh, via email. Our email handle just to our general inbox is info at getcaribou.com. So the domain there is a little bit different, but you can, again, schedule the call directly through the website if you're interested in learning more or take a look at our case studies, our guides, all of the great resources, and we're kept up to date with other firms. It's all on our website. You can find us on LinkedIn as well as on Twitter, which is Caribou Wealth or at Caribou Wealth is how you find us on those platforms. Well, thank you so much, Christine. Now back to you, Hope. Thank you. What a great bunch of information that was. Thank you very much, Christine. Founder of Caribou, today's conversation, Wealth Management with a Healthcare Twist on Margaritas with Margarita Chang, CFP Pro. I'm Hope Katz Gibbs, proud producer of the show on the Incandescent Radio Network and Incandescent TV. We will be back in touch with you next week. Christine, all the best of luck to you. We know that you are providing incredible services to your clients. We'll talk to you all soon. Thank you so much for being part of our Incandescent Radio and TV family. This is Hope Katz Gibbs, founder of Incandescent Incorporated, the PR and publishing company for women entrepreneurs. Our incandescent radio and TV shows are brought to you by our advertisers and clients. Margaritas with Margarita Chang, CFP Pro, brings us 15 minutes of tips every Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern on Facebook Live, where you'll meet experts who are helping us flex our financial muscles. Find all of the episodes at margaritachang.com. You'll also meet intuitive psychotherapist Kara Keem, who interviews therapists and other intuitive guides from around the world. Learn more at karakeen.com. And you're going to love social justice expert Karen Hanrahan, CEO of the San Francisco-based Glide Memorial Foundation. She bridges the gap from local impact to global change on her thought leadership show on Incandescent Radio. Learn more about Karen at karenhanrahan.com. You're also going to love Alina Liao, founder of the radical wellness journaling company, zenitjournals.com. Alina asks, have you tried to journal but found it hard to keep up? Then it makes it easier to journal for your wellness. With Zenit, you can customize your journal with prompts that speak to you. No more blank pages. Your Zenit is your personalized space to take care of yourself. Website, zenitjournals.com. Feel it, write it, Zenit. You'll also meet amazing Tracy Schott, founder of Voices for Change. Tracy is determined to change the world and end domestic violence. Learn more at voicesforchange.net. And we are so thrilled to be publishing a book for Angela Mitchell, who is the tech expert of case management. And she's also the founder of this fabulous organization, Kids Code 2. She is determined to teach kids to code computers. Talk about teaching a kid to fish. We invite you to discover and peruse all the Incandescent Incorporated websites, the magazine for women, by women, about women, incandescentwomen.com. Our health and wellness magazine is beincandescent.com, the business of mind, body, spirit, soul, and heart. Our YouTube channel is incandescent.tv. And you can learn about our PR and book publishing services at incandescent.us. If you'd like to have your own radio and video show, check us out at incandescentradio.com, where you can see what we can do for you. These podcasts are also featured on iTunes, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Our podcasts are produced by Brandy Wilsker. Our videos are produced by Nelson Benitez. Our website developer is Max Kukoy. And our incandescent illustrator and designer is Michael Glenn. If you'd like to learn more, please send me an email, hope at hopegibbs.com. Here is to your incredible, indelible, incandescent success. Much love and many.